Hey folks, and welcome back here to Gatekeeper Media as we continue to bring you coverage of the 2022 303 Open, and we've made it to our finale here out in beautiful Colorado at the Anheuser-Busch Beer Garden in Fort Collins. Thank you all for tuning in. I'd like to give a special thank you to our Patreon supporters who helped make this all possible. I am Dustin Murray, bringing the commentary, and once again, I am joined by Mr. Nick Hansen. How's it going, sir? Going great. I'm ready and uh, looking forward to this final round today. Absolutely. We have a great lineup for you here. Kyle Klein topping the card with a two-stroke lead, but Joel Freeman, Aaron Gossage, and AJ Carey not too far behind here. As we start taking a look at our leaderboard, we can see yourself up there in a tie for sixth. Uh, a few strokes out, still a chance to maybe make a run for the podium here. Nathan Queen also up there in the top five on that chase card as we'll take a look now at Kyle Klein's bag putting the P1s can throw the logic and tactics for approaches uh, also likes to use the FD3s and DD3s quite a lot and so I expect we'll see plenty of those on the course today yeah Aaron Gossage bag uh, Aaron Gossage's bag here sponsored by Discraft is gonna be throwing the challenger the buzz um, you're gonna see some stalkers some forces and some nukes out of him today Indeed, very powerful thrower, so expect some big distance out of him today as we take a look now at Joel Freeman's bag. Uh, Putts the Whale, known for his gators and chariots in the mid-range department. And then, of course, kind of your typical molds after that, some Firebirds, some Destroyers, uh, and a Max if it gets really windy out there. And our final player, AJ Carey's bag, consists of the AVR and Pig for approach discs. He's going to be throwing the Mako 3 and the Rock 3. And you're also going to see some FDs, some PDs, some Wraiths, and some Destroyers out there today from him, I would assume. Indeed, I would imagine so as we get onto some Miller territory here on hole number one. Yeah, hole number one is 260 feet. It's a par 3. Um, both hyzer gaps are going to be the... I would say majority of the routes that are taken, but you can throw the up the middle route that we see that just flew. Um, I would expect some of our players to be throwing the sidearm though. All right, and that's right. We got our leader taking the box first here, Kyle Klein, currently ranked ninth in EU Discworld rankings. Has had some big finishes already this year with the third at Preserve. Just took third at Idlewild. And uh, also a top five at the Open in Belton with several other top 15 finishes on tour this year. So always a very strong competitor. And he won this event last year. So looking to repeat. Oh, and a good shot from him. He might be just on circle's edge there, but he'll be putting for Now, of course, we got Joel Freeman taking the box. Currently ranked 12th on the UDIS World Rankings. We saw him find the podium at both the Beaver State Fling and Waco. Also has had some other top 10 finishes on tour this year, including fourth at Texas State's and sixth at Jonesboro. And he's gonna come up a little short hitting that tree there, but he should still be inside the circle. And finally here, we're getting to Aaron Gossage from Discraft, currently ranked in the top 30 in the UDIS World Ranking. Saw a couple of big finishes out of him this year already. Had a third at DDO, was also third at the OTB Open and fifth at Waco. Oh, what? Oh. Wow, surprising. He's going to catch that early OB on the left there and gonna come up short. Um, very surprising. Yeah, definitely a misfire you don't really expect to see from someone like Aaron. As we now get to AJ Carey, a guy who we regularly see kind of placing in or near the top 30 on the Disc Golf Pro Tour when he gets a chance to get out there. Really cool dude. Glad to see him on the lead card. Nice to see the up the middle round from him and look at that right under the basket. Uh, this hole today actually played as the second easiest hole on the course. So not surprised a bunch of our players are inside for two. And it's a tough one there for Aaron having to pitch up and take bogey on the opening hole. Something again, you just really don't expect to see. Lengthy putt here for Joel Freeman to try to go ahead and tag in a birdie. That looks like it was a little wide left. Yeah, he's not going to be happy with that. It's not how you want to start your round on this hole. Oh, 
Oh, Kyle Klein coming up short as well on the first hole. He seems thrilled. Wow, our card's going to play this hole even today. Yeah, that's shocking. As I know we've had some windy conditions the first couple of rounds. Uh, from your recollection, you know, you were playing this event, obviously, we saw you there on the leaderboard. Was this a little better conditions in the previous day, or was this about the same? Um, if I remember correctly, I think this was actually the windiest of the three days. Oh, dope. All right. Love to hear that. The scores might be a little less than they were. I mean, the last couple of days we had some pretty hot scores with those high 15 down and things like that. We're on hole two here. It's uh, 388 feet. The disc is going to need to move from left to right to get inside the circle there. Yeah, lots of trees lining that right-hand side of the fairway, so that left to right moving shot is certainly ideal. And I assume we'll see a lot of backhand turnovers here. AJ Carey up first. Has that one drift a little too much, but gets past the pin and still has a putt at it. Sure, we're going to see a similar line here from Kyle Klein. That'll do. Forehand from Joel Freeman. Not too surprised to see that. Definitely one of the guys that has a bigger forehand out on the tour, and he gets a good lie there. And Aaron Gossage, another guy with a pretty big forehand, will be taking it out wide and will be able to slide up to the green for a great circle one putt. And now we get up to Kyle Klein. Looking to see if he can grab himself a birdie here after the par on hole one. Lengthy putt ahead. Just going to sail it a little bit there. I'm sure he wanted to get that one up and in, and at least he gave it a good bit. And after going deep, A.J. Carey has a lengthy bit ahead of him as well. Looks like a bit of a crosswind. He'll come up just short. And, man, there's some woes on the putting green in these breezy conditions. And there's a good comeback putt for par. Looked like from out circle's edge out there. And now we finally get to Aaron Gossage, who is CTP off of the tee. We'll see if he can capitalize here. Would be nice to bounce back after the rare bogey on hole one. And there it is, erasing that one from the scorecard right away. A good bounce back there. Absolutely. Especially with everyone else kind of struggling here to get their birdies. It'll kind of keep them... In his, in his same position. I didn't lose any ground here. And this hole did play close to even part, so... Not surprising we're only seeing one birdie here, I guess, but you'd think we'd get more out of our lead card. I'm sure the wind's playing a role in that, as we now get to another long par three with an uphill climb. Yeah, 395 feet. Uh, most of our players are going to be throwing the big hyzer that's going to push left to the basket. Um, and basically going to be almost a full pull for some of these guys. They throw it too flat, they risk going out of bounds deep. Yeah, Aaron Gosh is playing that high and wide hyzer you're referring to. Looking to try to spike that in near the basket. Oh, a little bit of a nasty roll as it lands, but still in bounds. Still in bounds should be about circle's edge, I would say, maybe just outside. Carrier looking to take a similar route. And he is certainly getting a similar flight. Just on the opposite side of the green. Yeah, and you can see how he's close to that OB line there. That does come into play for some of these bigger arm players. Kyle Klein lets it go. Maybe not getting as much drift. Actually does find the out of bounds because of it. Yeah, 
That's unfortunate. Just skipping along there. This hole actually played as the sixth hardest hole, um, but just barely over par. Yeah, I mean, it can be a tricky one. You know, blind shot, uphill, windy conditions. Just have to be really accurate as Joel Freeman skips it over the top of the basket, oh, it looks like. so unfortunate, though, to go into that tree. Hopefully, there's a look out of there. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, threw a dart there, but might be obstructed. It's Kyle Klein trying to save par, but just floats on him there. Gossage looking to go back to back, but has to do it from range here with this jumper and just comes up short. Those rolls today can be treacherous with this wind if they really get picked up and going. Exactly. You, know, you get up on a roll, the wind can just keep it up for longer, and that could be a problem as at least Klein's able to hit a pretty nice little comebacker there to limit the damage. Low again, though, for Gossage. Yeah, three putt from inside circle two. Very unfortunate on this hole. Certainly. That one goes high for AJ Carey. Oh, man. Again, you can really see that this win is messing with our players. It forces you to think a little bit more. Sometimes you overthink it. Sometimes you don't quite get it white and get the wrong read or the wind shifts. And it can get treacherous out there. But Joel Freeman able to tag the birdie. Yeah, you're exactly right there with you know all the uh, things that come into the you know pro players mental state when putting is you can see Gossage here you know only a few feet away but he's looking at those chains he's thinking they're maybe in the wrong order or you know something's up it's already such a mental part of the game and then they have those added factors get thrown in you can see some crazy stuff happen that you're not used to seeing and we'll be back back to it here get to our first bar four yeah, hole four is 830 feet. Um, the majority of players are gonna try and get to this fence line here, but I would say the players in our cards are gonna be trying to get up into this region. Um, but from that region, it's gonna be an uphill approach to a treacherous green with OB on both right and left side. Uh, the three is in play, but it's a difficult birdie out here. Certainly so. I mean, a lot of it really just comes down to footing, depending on if you can land on the flat or if you wind up landing on the slope off of the tee as Freeman hangs out wide right probably trying to make sure he can get himself on some flat footing doesn't quite yeah. make it though he almost got all the way up there though and you know that's what the big arms really try and get to they get try and get all the way to that top ledge there on the right hand side AJ Carey this one maybe turning a bit more than he thought it would and that's going to be really obstructed over there it's going to be a tough angle right yeah, that's going to be very tough um, to get it. I mean, he might even have a tough time getting up and down far from back there with how much that pushed to the right. Speaking of big arms, Aaron Gossett certainly has one. One of the more powerful throwers I've seen in person, honestly, but it's like that one got away from him a bit over there, kind of near AJ Carey. Yeah, it almost seems like we have kind of like a left to right headwind on this hole. It's pushing all the discs right at the midway through the flight. Yeah, and Klein having seen all that, you know, maybe rip on something a little more overstable. Does fine he's near the flat. Yeah, he's going to make the correction, and I think he's going to like that position. And I mean, Aaron Gossett still has the forehand to attack the screen despite maybe being a bit more out of position. As you can see here, this thing's getting way up there, maybe two up there. Ooh. Oh. Yeah, pushing that OB line there. This course is very attackable and very scorable, but you can find OB on this course pretty easily, too. Certainly. So AJ Carey looks to play that big backhand, and he is going to find that OB you're referring to. There it is. This actually played as the third hardest hole of the day, and it was only .37 over par. What a forehand here from Klein, though. I think that's going to be inside the circle for him. I, I agree with you. I think that's the case, and that's exactly what he kind of needs at this point because he's been starting to bleed some strokes. Joel Freeman's caught up to him already here, and that can maybe certainly help him right the ship. So let's see what Gossett just got here. He's pin high, but just, I would imagine, outside the circle too, even maybe. 
Oh man, dead center, but high. Can't be mad at that. He's getting, a, he's getting a lot of metal on these first couple holes. That was certainly a good bid. Nothing to be ashamed of on that one. Gave it a chance. Similar position here for AJ. Just kind of try to float it in there, but not quite. Joel was actually much shorter than I thought. Um, maybe he threw a fairway driver for that second one. I mean, the putting woes just continue on this lead card so far. Yeah, Kyle is, he is not happy about that, and he can't believe it either. Yeah, he's definitely missed short, I feel like, on a couple of putts. So maybe just scared to commit too much in the wind, or maybe just a little bit off on the timing. Maybe something he can hopefully kind of go back and figure out between holes. As good par putt there from Gossage. He just puts so hard and so aggressive. I always mm -hmm. fear that this is going to pop out of the basket for him. Yep. Seen it happen to him, actually. I was uh, He was on our card at Tallahassee when I was uh, caddying for Cameron Colglazer. It's like one of the last rounds of the tournament. and Definitely a guy that just has power throughout his entire game. <laughs> cool dude, though. Very good. And we're on to hole five here. It's uh, 425 feet. I would say all four of our players are going to throw the power hyzer um, out to the right. And then hopefully it gets up in there. Uh, there is a ledge. So as long as you're up top, you're going to have a nice, easy look for you. Yeah, I kind of want to shout out the shirt here from Joel Freeman, by the way. Really cool, like, disc golfer pattern that shifts into, like, some weird windmill looking thing. I don't know. Kind of dig it. You know what I don't dig, though? That lie. One out of bounds. Yeah, that's Ooh. not one that you, you like a lot. Yeah, I mean, this one is really one you shouldn't really have to worry about the LB for these players, but that wind is, you know, really giving them issues today. No doubt about that. He just needs this to get back. And it's starting to. If he can get the right skip, kind of just dead, though, in the ground. It's actually going to be a little deeper, the basket looks like, inside the circle. Yeah, it looks like it was right near the edge, so... I feel like this is one of those days where you really, you know, park percentage is, I mean, gold. Yeah, if you can get it inside that, you're so happy with yourself walking down the fairway. Like that right there, that's a way to oh. fix your putting problems, not having yes. to. Exactly. <laughs> oh, man. The conversation was, how are we going to fix this? We're going to put it closer to the basket. Absolutely. It's a bold strategy, Cotton, and it's paid off, as we're seeing. AJ Carey put a good move on this. Oh, he was asking for it to get down, and sure enough, there it is. And here we are for a form check. So AJ Carey leading with that front shoulder there, and you're going to see him pull through and just absolutely rip that disc nice and flat with a little bit of hyzer, and as we saw, it's under the basket. Joel Freeman just trying to save bogey on this one, but he didn't like that out of his hand I mean not bad though oh that's that's fine I don't know what he's complaining about maybe just something weird happened with his footing when he let go and he thought it was gonna be worse than it was but yeah totally fine there you go good to see Aaron connecting early here uh, you know he did take a bogey there but he's gonna get back on track here with this birdie yeah, I mean, you got to think, like, the, the scores are getting pretty tight at this point. You know, Joel Freeman's going to drop back down. It's going to put Aaron Gosses in a chance to kind of tie him up for second position here. And, you know, Kyle Klein, this birdie kind of finally holds them back. Yeah, it's it's a good, uh, I would say it's a good bounce back for him after a couple of pars, you know. Seeing as, like, on this early holes, you want to maintain, but you also want to score. Yeah, we're actually going to take a look at a little bit of a chase card check-in up ahead of the lead card here. We saw a couple of these guys are certainly still in contention to fight for a podium spot. And Nathan Queen leads us off, almost flashing the chains there with that drive. I'm not sure who this is, but another just great hyzer there. It looks like, like we talked about in that park, that park circle, which is huge. Hey, who's that? Hey, and there's myself. Howdy doody. Threw a, throwing a good shot as well there, you know. Couple in there. Big fan. A little biased, but 
Big fan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Either way. You know, I do feel like there might be a reason we're looking at this chase car check-in. And based on some of these landing zones, I have a feeling I know what it is. As I suspected. Yeah, there's one. That is one. Can we get a two? Oh, this guy might mess it up. Nope. Nope, not today. Old Falarson orange shoes gets it. He's yeah, out of there. A little flashy. Yeah, match the beard with the shoes as we are going to see the... Tap in from mystery man number one. Sorry, buddy. No offense. Just wasn't prepared for this. <laughs> We're going to see another tap in. That is a star frame. So we head to a short break. Hi, guys. Ricky Waisaki here. We are starting the Saki Bomb Foundation. And the main goal for me is to really give back to the sport, start kids from a young age, and expose them to the great sport of disc golf that we all love. We got a website going, SakiBombFoundation.org. There's lots of different things you can do on the website. I've heard uh, the older generation of disc golfers saying, I wish I would have started disc golf when I was younger, and now I'm able to start these kids off at a young age through my foundation. It really means a lot to me, and it means a lot for the sport to donate and go to the website, SakiBombFoundation.org. All right, we're on to hole six, 375 feet. This is my favorite hole on the property, I would say. Um, it's gonna be a low ceiling shot, um, off the tee that's going to need to then fade at the very end of the flight. Uh, most players are going to throw, I would say, a flip-up shot, and this is going to be our second hardest hole on the course today. This is definitely one of those ones where you can't just kind of throw a big hyzer or something like that. You have to hit a particular line. You have to challenge a low ceiling, and uh, definitely more technical. Aaron's going to get caught up early and just like you said, more technical. And we see Joel, you know, practicing his shot and his swing in the back of both of these guys. It's Klein kind of still maintain this two stroke lead as we near the end of our front nine. But that has creaked open a little bit of a door. Who's going to peek through? A shot from AJ Carey, and look oh, at that! Oh, what a shot! And that's what I talked about. That nice little flip up. If you can get it flipped the entire way, you're gonna give yourself a chance. And he's probably close to the bullseye. I still can't get over this short, man. It's like it's almost like animorphs, but not an animal. Oh boy! That's three well, three. fairway what hit. Second kick though to get all the way back out to the fairway. Heck yeah, that's a fairway hit on the old U disc. Would you say Joel has the best shirt game in the game? Man. Uh, you know, I would say he's certainly got to be up there. He's definitely had some really flashy colors and unique designs. I, I would put Matty O up there, too. I mean, the Boa Crawfish shirt is just, it's too good. That is a good one. Do you have a favorite, favorite Joel Freeman shirt? Oh, man. I don't know. I just feel like he has so many flashy, bright color shirts that just pop, you know? But I like this one. This this is kind of like a neat little design. This is this has become a new favorite of mine for sure that he's got on today. Look good, feel good, play good. You know. I hear you there. This one's pretty cool too from AJ Carey. To be fair, I do like this one. Almost like a stained glass look. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I was kind of thinking. I'm a big blue, pink, purple guy as well, so I like the combo. What is this devolved into, really? I mean. I'm sorry, guys, <laughs> out there, but, you know? Hey, you know, kind of passive sometimes. But that's going to be one of three birdies on the day there by A.J. Carey. Good par save there from Joel Freeman after going a little awry off the tee. Just going to cart a bogey on this one. Final. He's really been back and forth these first six holes. Very true. Just a couple more left to play here as we get to hole number seven. Yeah, 345 feet. You're going to have OB on the left-hand side that runs all the way behind the basket. And then the horse pit there is also going to be OB. The horse pit. Interesting. Is that what it's actually called? Um, I guess I don't know. The 
correct terminology. That's what I call it. It's a great forehand. We can call it that. I think that's without too much debate. The circle. Yeah. yeah. That's wonderful. I still like the uh, hidden shock wire fence. <laughs> it's uh, still a personal favorite of mine here along the course, as we are going to see Klein hang out the big hyzer. Oh, boy. Oh. Port, that Is disc. Man. Surprisingly enough, I've actually one time seen a disc skip off that road uh -huh. and over that fence that you can see in the catch can. Dang. We get some crazy winds up here in Fort Collins. Nice forehand there from Joel Freeman. Puts himself up there in or near the circle, it looked like. And no surprise to see Gossage also going forehand. Definitely a guy who has plenty of power to get there. Same with Freeman. Oh, yeah. Oh, a little air bounce, and he's going to be perfectly upside up there in the circle. And here we have a form check. So Gossage, you know, tight and compact, but then, you know, it's just really that snap of the wrist that he has that gets him so much power, I would say. And he could have probably went all hyzer there. And this is uh, Klein trying to save the par after going OB, and there it is. That's a putt that feels good after what's going on today. We're going to get a rewind here. He's made some really good putts to either save par or, you know, save bogey so far. And it's hard to say, but when you're making 35 footers for those, you're going to, it's really going to help your scorecard. Yeah. Slight headwind putt here for Aaron Gossage for birdie. No problem. That'll do. Yeah, he almost looked a little worried there as soon as he released it. I mean, the way that things have gone today, I can't blame him. It's just been an odd one as a uh, caution electric change for A.J. Carey as he uh, is going to hit the turkey here. Yep. This is a really good stretch here where if you can get some birdies going and get into Ooh. the back nine, you're going to be very happy if you, like I was saying, get some birdies now and get into the back nine, which is more scorable. Bill's going to be pretty disappointed with that miss putt, I would say. Yeah, definitely not one you want to miss when you've done so well off the tee. As we're going to do a little bit of a different check-in here towards the end, we're going to do a little FBO check-in. We got Cynthia Ricciotti today here throwing an up shot. We are going to have full FBO coverage for this event coming up soon. We'll take a look at Rebecca Cox as well here. This is the short tee pad on seven that they're playing, and wow, what a park job out of her. Absolutely. How about a little Deanne Carey cameo? Shot there as well. <laughs> and we're on to hole eight. And par four, 500 feet. I would say this is reachable for Eagle, but I would say most players are just gonna throw into this short basket region to play for what should be a very easy birdie. Yeah, it kind of depends like where you're at on the scorecard. You know, I feel like, you know, Joel Freeman and Aaron Gossett certainly had the power to reach it for Eagle, and that could be their chance to try to, you know, catch up to the leader before the front nine ends. But I mean, it also, I would imagine comes down to, you know, the wind read and what they think is reasonable. Yeah, I say this should be easy, but it only played at point zero six under par for the round, actually. So, pretty close to even par. And you see Gossage lining up forehand, so I would imagine he's looking to play this for birdie. Oh, no. Pretty aggressive. Oh, boy. See you later. Is he going to clear that road? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's, there's never a doubt in my mind that thing was sailed. And unfortunately, just the wrong direction. He was 100% going for that, and I think even if he would have had the right line, he might have went deep OB. Yeah. I mean, with the right win, I mean, 500-foot forehands are not really common by any means, but maybe with the right win and skip, so you could at least put yourself in circle two. That. I know earlier in the weekend we saw um, Kyle Klein get pretty close with his mid range, so it is possible with the right wind. Oh my god, you see that wind bounce? 
Man, it's, wow. that was a little bit of evidence on just what's happening out there. Yeah, I think these three players that played for Birdie here are going to be happy with their choice, even if they get up and down and only get par. Absolutely, man. See Freeman line up. Looks like mid range here. Trying to spike it in. Kind of sailed on him there. Push. Yeah, I was going to say, it looks like it's pushed pretty hard, and he's going to be lucky to sit there on that hillside. Chance still to perhaps save par for Gossage here with this upshot, but oh, that's the wrong side of the tree. Sit. So close. It's going to go B again there, unfortunately. That's going to be two penalties, so. Great putt, though, for Purdy from Joel Freeman. Let's rewind that one back. Yeah, what a putt here, folks. He's probably outside the circle and downhill a little ways, but makes light work of that birdie putt. That's going to feel good after a couple of errors early on in the round. We get up to Kyle Klein here looking for birdie in his own right with the stun of shades on. Looking to stun on him. Yeah. It is. That's what's up. The birdie from your leader, folks. Mm -hmm. Deal with it. That's the one saving grace there for Aaron Goss. At least he was close enough to the pin to have a pretty routine putt to go ahead and at least limit it to bogey. Yeah, it's pretty tough, though, when the birdie's this easy. Three of our players were routine shots, and then the last two made good putts, but three routine shots to get a birdie out of these players. AJ Carey's going to get four in a row there. Yeah, shades for him, too. A little deal with it from him as well. So we're going to move on to our final hole of the front nine. Yeah, 385 feet. It's a little uphill, and players are going to really be throwing a shot that moves right to left. Probably a flat to hyzer shot, um, and maybe a fairway driver or a light driver, I would say. AJ Carey first to act here. That kind of looked like it just got slammed out of the air there, so he's going to be significantly short, maybe even outside of circle two. Yeah, that thing got power bombed in the other ground when not messing around. That's more like it. A high swinging drive here from Kyle Klein. Gets him right near the pin. What a shot. What a shot, yeah. Like you said, pin high there. and Probably looking at an easy birdie. Short from Freeman, still circle though. Short as well there. So. It's interesting to see how players like choose to, you know, try and fight the wind. Whether they play like a flip-up shot or they go more stable and you know, kind of force it and let, you know, fight against the wind. I can tell you that was a pretty overstable fairway driver there from Gossage, so that was his choice. Kind of looked like just a half bid there from AJ. You know, he really just doesn't want to any strokes on this hole from where he was. Yeah, he's on kind of the climb right now. I think he's at, what, four birdies in a row or something like that. So he's no need to mess with this one. Three minute chance to go back to back after a bit of a slow start. And there it is. be outdone though Kyle Klein he's starting to heat up a little bit here as well after a couple of issues on the first couple of holes and that'll do it here for our front nine a couple of par tap ins and a couple of birdies so not a bad finish to the front nine for our lead card we take a look here Klein right in the ship three for five on the final holes to kind of get back on track AJ Carey with the hot streak though four in a row on five through eight to start climbing up the leaderboard a little bit in his own right this is where things stand so far as we head into our final nine. Yeah, we're going to have a hot battle here, I think, on the back nine, and hopefully we'll get some good competition going into whole 18. 
Yeah, we certainly appreciate all of you tuning in for this coverage, and a special thank you to our Patreon supporters who help make all this coverage possible. Be sure to follow and subscribe so you catch the rest of this event, as well as future coverage from Gatekeeper Media. Again, I'm Dustin Murray. With me has been Nick Hansen, and we'll catch you here soon. Have a good one, y'all.